but let's go right. Hello and welcome to today's video. Um, today I will take a look at the clutch. During the night ride I noticed that the, the play on the clutch does not really feel smooth anymore, doesn't return fully. Um, it feels like something is binding uh, in the clutch mechanism somewhere. So what I will do first is um, take a look at the clutch cable itself, see if that's moving freely. I don't expect any problems there, it felt like something snapped. Uh, and in the past I already had an issue with the uh, thruster piston that's uh, in the clutch mechanism. Uh, that's that's uh, connecting to the push rod. So that means that we probably need to take off the, the swing arm uh, and take a look at that as well. So let's get started. Here you have the clutch cable coming in. So un undo that completely. That should give enough freedom to detach it on the uh, other side. Um, what I mentioned, or what I mentioned, is that it does not return smoothly. So there should be a bit of free play, that there is free play, but the last part does feel, feels like there's uh, binding something, so let's have a look. Here we have the other side of the clutch cable, and now I should be able to pull this side out, yeah, just like that. Let's feel. No, it does not feel like anything is binding in the cable itself. Okay, so now take out the rear wheel. You take off the foot pack to get access to this free bearing rod. Free bearing. Uh, bolt, so need to remove this nut and then I can remove the free end of the swing arm, arm bearing. Now nou, remove the rear shock. As well. The next part is removing the, free, the bearing bolt uh, on either side of the swing arm. These are um, secured with the Loctite uh, 2701 which you need to heat to 120 degrees to break loose. So I have a thermometer, digital one, so you can just point at it. 15 degrees, so I can monitor the temperature. If you don't have uh, tools to ma monitor the temperature, you can just heat it a little bit, try to loosen it slightly. If it doesn't budge, heat it a little more and continue till it loosens. This is the gearbox. Um, if, you do, if you try to remove these bolts by brute force, you will break the gearbox. Yeah. Pin should come out easily as well. Or well easily should come out. It does take quite a bit of force. But as you see it's just with standard tool no lever extension on the ratchet, so don't do that. The gearboxes are pretty expensive, so... Okay, now, do the other side. So as you see, there's no need to remove the footrest on this side because we don't have a nut to remove. 
is the fixed end bearing pin. So. Sink, heat it to roughly 120 degrees. And then take it out. That's 110. Let's see if we can get it out already. I'm gonna check with the mechanic if he has a spare one because this one doesn't look as fresh anymore. And this is not something you can easily repair if you mess it up. So let's see if it drops out or not. So let's put this somewhere safe. Get the cut on or the uh, drive off. And then we can look at the clutch. Now we can have a look at taking apart the shifter. Let's see if we can undo the screw. Now the dust cap. Come on, come on, come on. Yup. There should be spring below it. Ooh, nasty. Look at that. That requires a bit of cleaning. And then there should be the pressure piston. When I was uh, cleaning the stuff, I noticed that the bearing for the piston, or the uh, guiding piston, actually, I'm not sure if you can see it, but it has some play in it. Uh, it still spins freely, but that can be the reason uh, why it's binding. I hope that, it, that, it, that is the, the problem. It actually has quite a bit of free play, and I looked at the new one that I have, that, that has no place, so uh, definitely not stock. Um, the other thing that, we, that I need to replace is probably the reason why the bearing ceased or got uh, additional wear. The dust cover has a tear in it, so I did debate whether I should replace that or not. Um, 
what, what, what I should get it uh, up front, but it was actually quite expensive piece. It was, I think, 50 or 60 euros. So I didn't do that, which basically means that I need to order it and continue tomorrow or the day after. So I got the final drive off. Now I'm gonna clean these splines, both sides, put some new grease on them. And then they can go back on the bike. They still look fine. Check for play. There's no play at all on the final drive, so that's good. No concerns there. I will put down below what the official or what the uh, Greases that you shoot that you should use according to the service manual. But I got a equivalent replacement and that's uh, Stabur Staburax uh, MBU 30 PTM, which is special a special kind of loop for uh, for splines. You only need to do put a little bit of this stuff on there. This is the loop. And pro probably I even already have way too much loop. To put on the splines, but okay. Same on the other side. It's a really sticky loop. <laughs> really thick. I think it's the first time in 10 years that I regrease it, so eh, probably should have done that sooner. Several days later. I got a new pivot bolt, or new salvage pivot bolt from, uh, from another GS. And a new rubber bellow. So now we can put back the clutch lever. So let's do that. First thing is to install this piston. With a, with a bearing on the end, not sure if you can see it or not. A little bit of grease on the top. So I put a little bit of the, what is, what is it, the Staburax on top. So. Well, let's put everything in the bike. Now put the new piston in. Now let's put the rubber bellow on. So. That's on another fun part. See if we can actually tighten it. I had quite a fight getting it off. Next up is the clutch lever. Before starting to adjust the clutch lever, there should be a 12 mil gap between the lug nut and the adjuster, so you have some spare room 
play around with. So let's see if I can get that. And otherwise there's an adjustment on the rear of the, uh, the other lever and the gearbox that you can use for this. You get additional free play here. too tight it starts grabbing immediately so pull it back a little bit five mil so that's perfect and what's the problem because now it feels like it's returning completely so now the fun part of mounting up the rest what I've done is I've reattached the final drive already to the, the cardan to the final drive already. So now I have to slip on the swing arm and align it with the outgoing shaft of the transmission. So let's see if that is going to work. So it was a bit of a, of a fight. What I ended up doing, and I think it's the easiest way to do it, especially if you're by yourself, connect the swing arm back to the shock. So that way you have a, a leverage point. You don't have to hold up the weight of the, the, of the swing arm uh, and the final drive yourself. Sorry for the uh, pressure washer, by the way, but okay. And then you can fiddle around, feel whether it actually engages or not. And then uh, it now feels that I'm spinning also the gearbox when I spin the, the rear wheel. Just put two bolts in there to check it. Put it now in gear. Still have the old bolt on this side, so I will pick up the new bolt, put it in. Then difficult stuff should be over. So a little bit of normal grease on the pivoting point. So a little bit of green Loctite on the threads. Just a little bit, it's more than enough. One dash, this, this is way, this is more than enough. Hundred and fifty newton meters to tighten this bolt. It's an awful lot. I spoke with the mechanic, he says, well, I would just put a little bit of grease on it and that should do it. It's 15 newton meters. So now go to the other side, rinse and repeat. Now this should be tightened at 7 newton meters. I don't have a, I have a torque wrench that goes down to that, but that doesn't have a big socket size. So I will just use this and make it hand tight. And then the lock ring that goes on top go, uh, has to be tied to that 107 newton meter. Mm -hmm. 
had it five newton meters. Now, put the back wheel on, torque the bolt for the shock, torque the bolt for the reactor rod, Caliper, uh, brake calipers back, then we're done. That's it for today's video. If you enjoyed it, put a thumbs up. If you want to know anything, drop a comment down below. And I will see you the next time. Bye.